Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Red Hat Summit 2016. Brought to you by Red Hat. Now, here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome back to Red Hat Summit 2016. This is theCUBE, uh, getting to the end of day one. Happy to have on the program uh, the third of the afternoon keynotes, uh, Nayaki Nair, uh, who is the general manager and global head of IoT and innovation go to market. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Stu. Great, uh, can you give our audience uh, just a little bit about your background and, and your role at SAP? So I have the IoT go-to-market division at, uh, at SAP, and I've been with SAP over uh, four and a half years now, and uh, have gone through a full journey with SAP, uh, all the way from the cloud journey and now into the whole IoT space. Great, so uh, we've actually covered uh, Sapphire a few, a few years with theCUBE, uh, so you know, mobile transformation, something we, we've documented quite well. Uh, bring us up to speed with IoT, you know, what, what's kind of uh, a continuation of the journey that SAP's been doing and uh, so some of the major differences? So um, what we have done is, um, as a part of the overall IoT uh, strategy, we have defined what we call uh, things to outcome as a framework because it's such a big, wide topic. And we have uh, very clearly come out and um, identified what is the key focus for SAP while we partner with the rest of the ecosystem to give us a connectivity layer. And um, with, across multiple, four different industry clusters that we are razor focused on, manufacturing, high tech, uh, professional services, the various industries that we are uh, very razor focused on and building solutions for each one of those solutions right now. Yeah, well, we've been having this sort of ongoing debate amongst ourselves and within our colleagues about IoT, specifically about is IoT going to be an edge technology? Is it going to be a, a core technology for where data is? Where, where do you see, where does SAP see that? Maybe where are the use cases that might align to either one of those? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. I always get this question. Every time I visit a customer, they say, Nayaki, where is money in IoT? Is it really the connectivity layer or is it really the value and the outcomes uh, it generates? And uh, what we fundamentally believe is uh, the outcome layer is uh, where customers are really getting value, but you need the connectivity to get to those outcomes. You need uh, the edge computing, we need to make that intelligent, and as we bring the data in, and uh, the value you can derive from uh, this data is what really the customers are looking for. So it is not either or, it is yeah. an end, edge plus um, the applications that generate outcomes out of it. Yeah. Okay. Can you give us some examples? I mean, you know, IoT. We, we hear these enormous numbers. You know, forty trillion dollars in new, you know, re revenue for the economy. Give us some sense of where are we today? You know, are we in the first inning? Are we in, you know, second inning? How far are we? What are some great examples? I of would that? say we are in the very early stages. But let me give you some examples of customers, right? Yeah. And I was talking about Under Armour this morning. And if you look at Under Armour as a brand, it was barely even known 10, 15 years back, yeah. right? Today, they're not only competing with all the majors, the likes of Nike and Raybox of the world, but they have transitioned their business model of not just selling fitness products, but selling fitness as a service, which means they have to be monitoring the fitness levels of all their consumers, millions and millions of consumers around the world, and prompt them and nudge them to exercise more so they can stay fit. So here is a great story, a company that was just selling fitness products because of IoT, now they can get very connected with their consumers, uh, uh, the health of the consumers, and uh, provide that service to them. So I see this evolution of business models for large manufacturers, it's the same thing. Uh, GE's of the world, Siemens, all of them going through a big transformation of not just selling equipment, but selling it as a service, the outcome that the customer is looking for. And this is where I see a, a big transformation going on. Yeah, I, I mean, there's some very industry specific things. I think everybody with mobility, it, there were some pretty straightforward ways that people understood to unlock the power of mobility. Uh, with IoT, I, I think we kind of dig into every use case. It's like, oh, here's some key finding they have and how they connect to their customers more. But, you know, how does SAP, do you have the experts to go in, yeah. uh, you know, on each kind of vertical? Any more stories you can share? Yes, uh, very much. We have what we call design thinking workshops where we do with the customers to identify what are the key scenarios that the customers uh, can get value. Like for example, Trenitalia, I was talking about Trenitalia, one of the largest operator of trains in Italy. And uh, we do a full workshop upfront to identify what is the right use case for them to get value. And then we start implementing the solution end to end. You know, in Trenitalia's case, they actually collect uh, 700 terabytes of data coming from their trains. 
I mean, that is the amount of data that gets collected from all the trains. So what do you do with that data, yeah. right? It's all about how you analyze the data and uh, make some decisions and, and get some outcomes. So that's where the reality really comes in. And uh, we have to start from identifying what the right use case is, and we go about uh, uh, implementing that for the customer. Yeah, I, SAP is extremely well known for you know, technology around supply chains, around business, business process. How much of that is reusable for IoT? I mean, conceptually, can you go to companies and say, look, we've got expertise in, in thinking about things end to end and thinking about what information means to process. Does that really help you get in the door? Yeah, so uh, our entire technology stack, uh, the core of it is uh, SAP HANA, which is our platform. And what we have done is to make it reusable from implementation to implementation, we have uh, released key IoT services that customers can get started. These are not specific to any one scenario, but they're generic enough, what we call the intelligent edge that customers can deploy at the edge that filters the noise out. And then as it comes into our core platform, our HANA platform, we have various services like remote data sync, we have dynamic tiering, so customers can use other data lakes for warm and cold storage, end-to-end -end device management. So there are a lot of out-of-the-box services that come with our platform, which are not customer-specific or um, implementation-specific, that customers can reuse over and over again across multiple implementations. Yeah. Great, can, can, can you tell us a little bit about the, the Red Hat partnership, any, any new announcements this week uh, that yes. we should know about? So I was talking about how we are working with Red Hat, uh, especially uh, that intelligent edge uh, that uh, we mentioned. Uh, it is to make sure those gateways, I mean we have all of these Dell gateways, Cisco gateways, um, all the gateways that are out there, today those gateways are what I call the dumb gateways, they're just moving data around they don't have the intelligence to filter the noise out. So we actually work with Red Hat to uh, put the intelligence. We have our software called SQL Anywhere. We uh, merged it with MQ. That was a message broker between the devices and, um, and our uh, uh, SQL, SQL, uh, SQL Anywhere database. And we also leveraged um, BRMS tool to filter uh, uh, the noise out. And on the HANA Cloud platform side, uh, we do use um, JBoss uh, data virtualization for us to federate the data and, and uh, have some uh, cool mobile apps. Yeah. So this implementation uh, is available in our booth that customers can uh, uh, see end to end what it looks like from a consumer perspective and also from a retailer perspective. Uh, and customers and developers can get their hands dirty on the whole thing. Right. When we spoke to Jim Whitehurst earlier today, he said that when he talks to customers, they equate open source with innovation. Uh, what, what are you hearing from customers? Uh, is there a real pull from them uh, on, on the open source side? So, uh, yeah, we are very committed. We totally believe that uh, open source is adding a lot of value and innovation to the entire, uh, I would say, IoT journey and also all the new technologies that are coming out. Um, so it is, uh, I would say, a good uh, balance between open source and also uh, other software providers, how we bring the data together and uh, really help customers uh, through the innovation cycles. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, we've seen in the past, we've talk, I talked a little about supply chain, but we've seen companies that are in same areas sometimes work very closely together. They're going to go solve a problem. They may be competitors in the market. Do you see that with IoT? They're, they're kind of, uh, what does the marketplace look like in terms of you know, learning from trains to automobiles to airplanes? Are they working together? Where do you see that happening? It is very amazing that um, the, the customers or companies that we never thought were our competitors are becoming our competitors and partners. Now, uh, I, I always refer uh, Jeff Emmel, he said today they're an uh, industrial manufacturing company and in future they will be a software and analytics company. So right. you would have, we would have never expected them to become a software company in the future. So right. it's, a, it's a, I would say a great um, evolution as we see some of our partners are becoming competitors or vice versa. And uh, yeah, yeah, we'll have to have the right ecosystem to uh, work with and bring the right value to our customers. Okay, as we look down the road, uh, you know, what, what should users be looking for when it comes to the adoption of IoT? Uh, any first steps you recommend for them or you know, milestones they should be looking at from either the ecosystem or their peers? You know, I always say think big but start small. IoT is a very, very big, deep and a wide topic. It is very important for customers going through this journey to identify a use case that will give them immediate value. 
uh, and start with those use cases, get value, get benefit, and then move on to additional use cases. Uh, versus trying to boil the ocean. It can become very daunting if you try to boil the ocean. So it's always important for them to identify use case and get started. You know, I will give you an example, especially in the pharma industry I see this, where uh, the number one requirement for pharma companies is to track and trace. Just track and trace. They need to track and trace every pharma product that gets manufactured from the manufacturing plant to it being in the warehouse when it um, is in the truck sort of vessels till it reaches a the consumer. They just have to track and trace. It's a very simple use case, but it's required mandatory and regulatory for a lot of pharma companies to do it. And they're all um, uh, in that journey now. So similar use cases are very relevant for every, uh, every company, every customer in multiple industries, and they can get um, big value out of it. All right, well, SAP's been at a center of many of these business transformations we've been watching, uh, so really look forward to watching the progression of IoT. Thanks so much for uh, sh sharing your updates, and Brian and I will be back with our wrap-up from day one here at Red Hat Summit 2016. You're watching theCUBE.